Welcome to part two. We're finally going to get our hands dirty and actually edit some photos. Let's start with spot healing. I know this is a shocker, but a very common photo fix that people want to learn is how to get rid of spots and pimples in their portraits. When it comes to retouching skin, the spot healing brush tool is the best option. It works by analyzing the area around the blemish, copying the colors and the textures, and replacing the spot with those. It is a smart tool that has been programmed to give you the best results with just one click. So let's give it a shot. Open one spot heal from the practice pack. You may need to zoom in closer to the spots you want to work on. In the navigation section of the toolbar, choose the icon that looks like a magnifying glass and click on the portion of the photo you'd like to see closer. Then, higher up in the toolbar, choose the spot healing brush. It's the first icon in the painting tools section and it looks like a band-aid with a little sparkle. Mouse over one of the spots and see if the circle of the pointer covers the spot completely. Do not click anything yet, we're just trying things out for size. If the circle is too small, hit the right square bracket on the keyboard until it covers the spot completely, but just so, there's no need to go bigger than the spot itself. If you went too far or the circle was too big to begin with, hit the left square bracket on the keyboard just a few times until the size is right. Once the circle is big enough to cover the spot, just click on it with a mouse. Boom, it's gone. Simple as that. Try that with some other spots in this practice photo. The key is to keep it as close as possible to the size of the blemish. That way, the program won't unnecessarily involve too much information from the rest of the image in trying to fix it, and won't create additional problems. See how by having my brush size too high, it will draw visual information from this area below and by that deform the jawline and will copy the spots from neck onto the cheek. Keeping the size of your brush the same as the area you want to fix will avoid all this mess. This tool even works for wrinkles, though I would be careful with overprocessing faces. It is still an available function and is good practice. Finish healing all the spots in this photo and try it on the creases around the mouth in the second practice photo, 2-spot heal. Experiment with drawing a path rather than just clicking. Click, hold, and drag. Let's learn some common fixes for when your photos are too dark. In the practice pack, open 3-exposure. This photo is what is called underexposed. When it was being taken, the shutter closed too soon and didn't get enough light into the camera to properly show all the detail. This resulted in it looking pretty dark. When you zoom in, you can see that the visual information, the pixels that make up grasses and rocks, are actually there. So how do we bring them out into the light? Wait a minute, what is a pixel, you ask? Use that magnifying glass zoom tool for me a few times. Keep clicking until you see tons of different colored squares separated by thin gray grid lines. Those are pixels. Each photo is made of thousands of these tiny dots coming together to form a complete image. Click fit the area in the options bar to see the whole picture again. Now let's try the obvious. In the image menu under adjustments, there is a command called Brightness and Contrast. Select that, and in the window that pops up, drag the Brightness slider all the way to the right. It is a scale from 0 to the left to 150 on the right. This lights up the ground all right, but not a whole lot of detail, and it blows out that spectacular sky. Click the cross in the top right of the window to exit without applying the changes. Since this photo is underexposed, what if we try adjusting exposure? In the same place, Image, in Adjustments, find Exposure. We will be using the top slider, Exposure. It's largely responsible for highlights, and just so you know, Offset is for shadows and Gamma Correction for midtones. Drag the Exposure slider to the right to see how it works 
and then set it at or around four points. See how there is much more detail on the ground now compared to the brightness adjustment? But we do have the same problem with the sky, if not worse. What to do? That is where the famous layers come in. Close that exposure window. Then right click on the layer in the layers panel and choose duplicate layer command. Click on the eyeball icon next to this layer to hide it just for now. And then click on the first layer to select it. It is very important always to be working on the correct layer. Some of your first troubleshooting when brush strokes are not showing up or something is just not working right is likely to be making sure that only the layer you want to make changes to is highlighted. Go back and turn the exposure up 4 points the same exact way we did before. Then click OK to confirm changes. Now click the eyeball next to the top layer to show it again. Notice how with the unchanged copy of the original sitting on top, it looks like the exposure adjustment had been undone. But if you look at the thumbnail on the bottom layer, you will see that it's still there. The next step would be to erase the ground in that top layer so that the original beautiful sky from the top layer would cover the washed out one on the bottom. Click the eraser tool in the drawing section of the toolbar and try erasing something. Nothing's happening, I'm not seeing any brush strokes. But hide that top layer again for a moment by clicking the eyeball icon and you will see that a portion of the bottom layer had been erased. You can see a checkerboard pattern which pretty much signifies ground zero in Photopea and Photoshop. You can see all the way through the image into parts that don't even have any visual information. This is an example of working on the wrong layer. To fix this, hit Ctrl and Z twice. Once to show the top layer and once to undo the eraser. Then click on the top layer. While you're here, I recommend checking the hardness of your eraser. It works like a brush, just in the opposite way. So the edges of the erased areas can be soft or crisp. Bring the hardness all the way to the left side if it's not there already. Use the square brackets to adjust the eraser size and gradually erase the ground to the level that you want. Look at that difference between this and that dark original. Now that the lighting is corrected, let's see if we can have some fun with the color. We don't need the layers to be separate anymore, so to merge the top one to the bottom one, right click either one of them and choose flatten image. Notice how now there is only one layer in the layers panel. In the image menu, there are some automated options, auto tone, auto contrast and auto color. These have been trained by the developers to analyze the image and perform their best guess at the fix. Sometimes the results look nice and sometimes they don't. Other times, you may just be looking for something in particular and those three aren't cutting it. So let's explore what's in the adjustments section of the image menu. The window that pops up when you select vibrance has two sliders one for vibrance and one for saturation. Vibrance is typically used when there are people present in the photo. It intensifies all the colors except the skin tones so that they don't turn orange. Saturation does the same thing to all the colors without exception. Slide the two around to see the difference. Say we want to bring out certain colors in this picture. I want the reds to be more intense and the greens to look more blue. We could try color balance in that same adjustment section. But notice how it skews the whole photo toward whatever color you drag the slider toward, instead of intensifying just that one color. Dealing with separate colors can be done through the selective color command in that same adjustment section. In the window that will pop up when you select it, See the little drop-down menu where it says Colors? Here is where you choose the one color at a time that you want to affect. Leave the red selected by default and drag the sliders around to see what happens. 
Cyan is opposite of red on the color spectrum. So if you move that first slider all the way to the right, the red disappears. That is because the red had been skewed toward 100% cyan, which makes it 0% red. Color theory is beautiful, complex, and very exciting, and I love to geek out about it. If you are interested in a separate video bringing these highbrow concepts down to earth, leave me a request in the comments. It would be so much fun to make and share that with you. For another practice round, open 4-exposure and see what can be done to improve the situation. This photo is overexposed, the opposite of the first. How can you fix it? There are some issues with the colors too, so make sure you experiment with those commands as well. That felt like a lot, but we haven't even made a dent in the surface of this amusement park sized toy box that photo editing is. That's right. All it is, is a vast set of tools there to serve you. Learning them all at once is impossible and honestly, unnecessary. After using Photoshop and programs like it for 20 years, there are still areas of it I've never touched. When it comes to this game, practice is king. So try to make time for it at least once a week. And remember, many techniques in photo editing build off of each other. So everything that you're learning and practicing right now is scaffolding for other skills. The video description has some neat goodies, like more free photo editing resources, the information on how to connect with us, with your questions and requests, and a link to a survey that helps us gauge the usefulness of content like this. Please take a moment to give some feedback. And if you want to show off what you've made, Tag us on your social media with hashtag IdealabMakes. I have really enjoyed sharing some of what I know about fixing photos with you. I hope you found it helpful and I look forward to connecting soon. Take care.